What's up guys, it's IntelliTech Studios here, your home for intelligent technology reviews and all sorts of other things like repair videos and, you know, comparisons and also videos on vacuum cleaners that show up randomly, etc. Either way, I've gotten a ton of requests to do a review on the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, but... I ultimately decided to do it separately from its newer sibling, the Galaxy Note Fan Edition. And today, we will focus on the latter, with the next review, or at least a review that's coming relatively soon after, focusing on the original and much more infamous handset. So, that being said, this is the full review in 2019 of the Samsung Galaxy Note Fan Edition. And should you still consider getting the Fan Edition, if you even knew about it in the first place, over other Galaxy phones, such as the Galaxy Note 5, the original Galaxy Note 7, uh, Galaxy S8, or whatever other Galaxy device that may pop up from time to time. So, starting off with the fact that a lot of people don't know about the Galaxy Note Fan Edition, and this is honestly a shame, because for those of you who loved the Note 7, loved the design of it, loved absolutely everything about it, and absolutely hated the fact that you had to turn yours in, then the fact that a lot of you guys aren't familiar with this phone is honestly breaks my heart, at least as much as your heart can be broken over a piece of technology. So this Note FE is basically a revised version of the Galaxy Note 7 that was released in certain markets alongside the Galaxy Note 8, or at the very least a couple months before the Galaxy S8. It actually um, came out after the Galaxy S8 and before the Galaxy Note 8 in around July of 2017. So the Galaxy Note Fan Edition initially debuted in markets such as Korea, obviously the South version, um, emerging markets such as Vietnam and India, and some international units were also released. But I can't blame you for not hearing about this device because this never hit US shores, nor European shores, nor Canadian shores, or Australian shores, or pretty much any English-speaking shores, other than maybe India or something. You can tell how much I know about geography. Anyways. The point is, is that the Note FE, while it doesn't necessarily pop up domestically in terms of your generic Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile cell phone stores, or Bell, Telus, whatever carrier you may have, it is still a great option because yes, you can still import these and these are still GSM unlocked, meaning that those in America, such as myself, can easily use this device on AT&T, T-Mobile, Straight Talk, and many other GSM-based carriers. Unfortunately, if you're on Verizon and Sprint, as far as I know, there is no version of the Note Fan Edition that will work for you. So if your original Note 7 is out of commission, then the idea of using a phone with this design on your carrier, if you have one of those carriers, is unfortunately very limited. So... The Galaxy Note Fan Edition is usually branded as such. As you can see, it says Note Fan Edition versus when I grab the original Note 7, you can see that it does have the Note 7 branding. Now, at least in this case. Now, the Galaxy Note 7, there were some international variants that did not have branding on the back or some of them didn't have branding on the front either. And that is something that you can tell the difference between these two. Now, this is not a specific thing to the FE, but for the sake of this review, since these are both the blue coral version, then you know that the one with the logo is the 7, and the one without it and with the screen protector on it is the FE. So with that out of the way, what's the differences between these two handsets? Well, there's two main differences between these two handsets besides just carrier stuff and overall where they came from, because obviously this one is an American T-Mobile unit and this one is a SK Telecom Korean unit. There's two main differences. Number one, the battery. So as we all know, the Galaxy Note 7 had a 3500 milliamp hour battery, which was very prone to occasional disastrous malfunctions, to say the least. But either way, the 3500 milliamp hour battery in this device, while it gave great battery life, some people had issues with the device being unstable and overheating to the point of combustion. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're already very well aware of what happened with the Galaxy Note 7 and what Samsung had to do to revise their image after recalling the phone twice. So what they did with the Galaxy Note FE is they took the original Galaxy Note 7, a lot of unused parts, a lot of unused uh, parts and devices that were just sitting in warehouses from before the recall, and they retooled them into this new unit. 
This one has a smaller 3200 milliamp hour battery, which is still larger than its initial replacement, the Galaxy Note 5, which has a 3000 milliamp hour battery, but it's still less than the eventual Note 8, or especially the eventual Note 9 and 10 series. So this is a slight disadvantage, but the advantage to it is that yes, while endurance may last a little bit less than the original Note 7, you no longer have to fear about the device potentially catching on fire due to the battery not having sufficient space inside the chassis. So there's that, and there's also the fact that the Galaxy Note 7, as many know, had a software update sent out to it that prevents the phone from charging. And as a result, this phone has not been updated beyond Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow. However, on the Galaxy Note Fan Edition, this originally released with Android Nougat alongside the S8 and Note 8 like previously, and also got updates to Android Oreo and even Android Pie. Yes, so the Galaxy Note FE is currently, as of right now, up to date on software, putting it with software parity to the Note 8 and beyond the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. So, if you liked the design of the S7 and S7 Edge, and you don't like the fact that your device didn't get Android Pie, and you have a GSM carrier like AT&T or T-Mobile, this is actually an option for you that you might really enjoy, because you do have the option to upgrade to Pie. Now, this personal unit that I own is on Android Oreo still, so it's basically in parity with the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge, but the Pi update is out there, so you can actually update this to the latest software from Samsung, at least as of right now, until Samsung releases their build of Android 10. So that's one thing that's a really great selling point of the Fan Edition, especially compared to uh, similar devices such as the Note 7 or the Note 5, or even the S7 Edge, is that you have more software support, and you're on a higher system software build, and you're able to update it. So that is something that is a great thing when compared to the Galaxy Note 7 and other devices. Speaking of which, while I also talk about other aspects, we're actually going to go ahead and power this off. And as you can see, this is the SK Telecom version. And we're going to do a boot up test between this Note FE and my Galaxy Note 7. So we're actually going to turn these on at the same time in 3, 2, 1. As you can see, the Note 7 initially started up quicker. Also, the startup screen is a little bit brighter, which is interesting. So while these are both booting up, we can also talk about the fact that uh, both these devices have completely interchangeable parts. There's T-Mobile. Have completely interchangeable parts, meaning if you have a Note 7 or a Note FE and your screen breaks or you need a new battery, because uh, yes, even though the batteries are different sizes, they are interchangeable. So if you have a Note FE and you want the larger capacity of a Note 7 battery, you can do that. And if you have a Note 7 and you want the added safety and security of a Note FE battery, you can do that as well because these devices completely share parts. It's not like the olden days of the Galaxy Note 3 and 4 when different carriers had different components. Thankfully, those days are long gone and everything is completely swappable between the two, including the batteries, chargers, cases, with an asterisk that I will talk about shortly, and of course things like the S Pen. So if you have a Galaxy Note Fan Edition, you can use the Galaxy Note 7 S Pen on the Note FE. And as we can tell based on this boot up test, I actually wasn't paying attention, so you guys can tell me which one booted up faster, but I'm gonna guess it was the FE, because at least when comparing these specific units, this Galaxy Note FE has the Exynos 8890 chipset, whereas this Galaxy Note 7 has the Snapdragon 820 chipset. Both of these have 64 gigabytes of storage and 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM. And they also both have SD card slots that can allow them to expand the memory. They both have IP68 water resistance, fingerprint sensors, iris scanners, everything that you know and loved about the Note 7 is on the FE. They did not add face unlock with any new updates, so you don't have face unlock like you do on the Galaxy S8. So for example, I can't just look at it and open it up without the irises, but you do still have the iris scanner, which is a wonderful option. Now, to move on to cases, because this is something that's very important. Any normal cases, like just standard gel skin plastic cases or screen protectors, all of which you can still find marked for the Galaxy Note 7 because a lot of companies are still liquidating Note 7 accessories to this day. So you can find these types of accessories for dirt cheap and use them just fine on your Note FE. So of course, any case that fits the FE will fit the 7 as well. These are both Galaxy Note 7 cases and they both fit the 7 and the FE interchangeably as expected. Now, one thing that differs besides cases and screen protectors are Samsung feature cases. These are separate. 
Now I'll be honest, I have no idea why Samsung did this. I don't know why Samsung decided to make it to where certain feature cases, actually really all their feature cases that were designed for the Note 7 don't work with the FE. But the only sort of rationale that I can think of is that since a lot of those are earmarked for the Note 7, then having people carry around accessories with the Note 7 branding would make people think that you're carrying around an actual Note 7. And especially with the airline ban, I can see why Samsung would like to stay away from that. But one thing that Samsung did though is at least a little bit nice and made it a little bit more palatable that they disabled all your old Note 7 accessories was that whenever you bought the Note FE brand new, you actually got a Clearview S-View case with the Note FE in the box. Now, a lot of Samsung's international Korean devices usually come with cases anyways, or at least they did much later on. So it's unsure if that's just specifically an FE thing or if that's just something that they did in general that they also extended to the FE since these initially debuted in Korea. So most tech YouTubers who talk about these talk about Korean units like this. But it is something that's nice. So if you somehow find one of those SVU cases designed for the FE, then you can use that. But getting a replacement or even finding one at all in the first place is honestly a really difficult process and I've still never seen one um, other than ones that were being sold alongside devices. So if you want that SVU flip cover case and you have a no fan edition, then good luck finding one because you're gonna be, it's out. It's honestly gonna be a lot easier to find those types of accessories for the original Note 7 since eBay is a great place to find old Note 7 accessories. Obviously most other retails have bars, sales of Note 7 related accessories, but eBay still lets you sell cases and stuff. And also once in a while, be careful um, whether or not you are fine with owning a Note 7. Um, if you are, then great, but if not, be wary that there are some people out there who are selling uh, original Note 7s, but their listing calls them the Note FE, even if they're not. Sometimes they'll call them the Note 7 FE. And, but also that's confusing because a, a lot of listings that I see of the actual Note FE call it the Note 7 FE, including the one that I got this one from, as well as the other Galaxy, the other two Galaxy Note fan editions that I've owned over the years. So it's just one of those things that you're going to have to be careful of. Um, depending on whether or not you actually want to own an original Note 7 or not, that's just, of course, up to you. Because don't let this whole recall thing scare you. If you want an original Note 7, good luck finding one, but I'm sure you can still find one. Just don't get on a plane with it and you're good. Whereas the FE also no longer has that ban in place. So if you do uh, a lot of air travel or just any air travel and you want to take your phone with you, then the FE is the one to get. Now, I know Apple recently did a recall with the batteries on their MacBooks where uh, those MacBooks were banned from airlines, but the exception was is that if you replaced your battery. However, I don't believe that exact grace was extended to the Note 7. So even if you replace the battery in your Note 7 with one that is safe, I still wouldn't consider bringing one of these on board of an airplane just because of the stigma of it. And also, if you are caught with one of these and you have any issues, or even just if you're bashful and don't want to turn it off, you will likely get slapped with a $180,000 fee for potentially inconveniencing the airlines. So I can think of plenty of other things I would rather spend that money on, especially considering that the Note FE costs way less than that and you could avoid those issues, as well as even a Note 8 or a Note 9 or a Note 10 or all of them, literally all of them brand new, would cost way less than that. So don't do that. If you have a Note 7, don't go on a plane. I mean, I don't use this anymore, so I would never carry this on a plane anyways. And even if I, even if I, whenever I did have it, I didn't have T-Mobile anymore, so couldn't use it. So, you know, I have my Note 9. So, either way, um, just don't do that. But if you do air travel, the FE is a great option for you. Now, I clearly went off topic with that, but to get back to cases, um, one Samsung official case that I have, for example, is this wireless charge battery bank designed for the Note 7. Now, I did a video on this when I did all my Note 7 case videos, and one thing is that, you know, if I turn this on, you can see it has a little battery on it, and if I slap this into my Note 7, it will start charging, which is wonderful. But this, this is something where, for some reason, this accessory doesn't work with the FE. And I don't have any idea why. Because the reason why the other accessories don't work with the FE is because Samsung took the technology, I forgot exactly what it was called, but the tech that they use for their SVU cases, 
they took that sensor and moved it on the phone so it can't detect it. So, granted, I still don't think they should have done that, but that at least explains why it doesn't work. Whereas, for some reason, and I'm also struggling to get my Note 7 out of this battery, <laughs> whereas, some reason, this battery bank does not work with the FE. But the FE still works with wireless charging, just like all the other devices. So, and the weird thing is, is that if I put this in, we can tell that it starts charging, and then if you give it a sec, it will say wireless charging paused. And I don't know why that is. From like based on what I can tell, I think that's purely a stubborn Samsung software move because there's no reason why that shouldn't work because the wireless charging coil is in the same place and it obviously started charging, so it's clear that it would have continued charging with this battery case. And especially considering that Samsung remove made the battery smaller, it would have been at least a little bit fine if they had at least let this case work with it. And especially because, like I mentioned about the other Samsung uh, SU cases having Note 7 branding, this does not. This has no Note 7 branding anywhere on it. It just says Samsung. This looks identical to the one that's designed for the S7 Edge, and those still work just fine. And the weird thing is, if I take this as well, and I make sure it's turned on, and I grab my Galaxy S8, and I plop it in there, it charges. See, look at that. And it's, it's still charging. It just it continues to charge. It's charging just fine, no issues. So I don't know what the heck Samsung did with that. I think that's really stupid. But that's just another thing to keep in mind, is that even this will not work with the Note FE, unfortunately. So if you wanted to use this little battery charger, when you wanted to use it on your FE, and you found one of these, you're out of luck. But everything else, all the other cases and screen protectors will work fine with the FE. I even have this one. It's the um, Invisible Shield screen protector, and this is a wonderful screen protector. Uh, it works great with the FE. I also had some uh, glass ones. They were like ones that didn't actually cover up the edge screen. And um, I had that on my Note 7 in some earlier videos as well. But either way, this screen protector, you know, it's still, I got some bubbles on it because I didn't put it on there right. But either way, that is great. So then this will protect this from scratches and everything. And then of course with the case, this thing is completely protected. So still note seven accessories again any of them that don't have special functionality will work just fine with the fe and you can still find those to this day as well as replacement parts because again same device so what exactly doesn't work with this device now this has nothing to do with it being the fe this is just something to do with uh the fact that it's a korean phone is that samsung pay will not work on this and it didn't work on the note 7 either because they disabled it with an update but Samsung Pay is one thing that will not work on this device. So if I go into, let's see, where's Samsung Pay on here? I forgot where it was. So if I find Samsung Pay, if I can figure out where the heck it is on this. Um, where is it? Okay, now I'm struggling to find Samsung Pay, even though I just, oh, here it is. So Samsung Pay. So if I click OK on this and I use Samsung and I try to set up Samsung Pay, give it all the permissions, and I and this is where it asks me to approve of the device location. If I say get started, it's, you can see it's gonna load for a little bit, and then give it a sec, and it's going to pop up an error. And you can see, check SIM card. You cannot use Samsung Pay with a SIM card from other countries. Insert the SIM card from Korea. So this is something where they kind of make it more difficult um, to want to use this, even for the fans. Is Now, granted, I think it's smart that Samsung does this. And again, this isn't an FE-specific thing. If you have a Korean Note 8 or anything, it will still do the same thing, as far as I'm aware. So this is actually something that is wonderful from a security perspective, because it means that you're not going to worry about someone from another country trying to get your information. But the bad news is, is that with this... You have to have a Korean SIM card, at least for this specific unit, for it to get Samsung Pay. Now, this is somewhat similar to what happens with the Note 7, because with the Note 7, even if yours isn't updated, if you open up Samsung Pay, it will just give you an error. Like in this case, it'll say update Samsung Pay, and then here, in this case, now, th this message changes every time I try to use Samsung Pay. So this is a different message, and it usually spits out, usually tries to update and just fails. 
But as you can see in this case, it pops up and it says, Samsung Pay has been locked. Uh, well, first it says, fail to download the latest version, try again later. So this is the usual error message I get. Because also the newest version of Samsung Pay doesn't support Android 6. But again, that has nothing to do with the Note 7 specifically. That's just an Android 6 thing. Um, but you would not get this message on a, uh, on a normal Android 6 device. It would just use an older version. So as you can see, it's this one says network connection is unstable. But either way, it says Samsung Pay has been locked due to an unauthorized modification on this device. And then it says fail, fail to download its version. So just spitting errors at me. And for those wondering, this is not a modified Note 7. If I go under general management and I go under here and I go status, it says that the device status is, of, is official. So this is not modified in any way. This is an original stock Note 7, and this one is just completely stock, original July security patch, no crippling updates on it, still at 100%. But yeah, Samsung Pay will not work on either of these devices. So if you want to use Samsung Pay, then unfortunately you're gonna to have to step down to the Note 5 or step up to the Note 8 if you want a Note device that uses Samsung Pay. So Samsung Pay is out of the question. For either of these, if you want Samsung Pay, you're not gonna get that with your Note FE, at least not any version that I'm aware of. Now, for those of you who have this device, if you have managed to get Samsung Pay working um, on either of these, please let me know in the comments below. But as of now, I don't believe there's any way to get Samsung Pay working, and especially not out of the box. So if you want Samsung Pay, you're out of luck if you wanna use the FE. But you do have plenty of other good things. In the case of both of these devices, you do still have the secure folder. So you do have various security right there. As you can see, the, the versions on both of these are of course a little bit different because of the older software. But if I go to both of these, they do both have the secure folder. So we have different ways to protect our data using the secure folder and everything on it is perfectly fine. So you have that level of security as well. And that's another thing you get with the FE that you don't get with something like the Note 5. So you have secure folder, that's a great option. Um, of course, you have the updated Samsung Notes. You have the up updated blah, 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 blah. A lot of stuff's updated. And everything just works very, very well. Also, one thing that's nice with the FE is that with the Android 8 Oreo updates, you actually got some of the options that were introduced with the Note 8 added to the Note FE. For example, live message. Now this is a feature that was introduced with the Note 8 and never reached the Note 7 because the Note 7 wasn't updated, but it did reach the FE. So you do have the live message option. Like this is incredibly cute. And you know, like for example, of course I can hold the this and you do an eraser. Actually, apparently not. So I'm just gonna redo this. And so if you wanna do something like, hey, cutie, and then draw a little heart. You can do that, which is incredibly cute. I love this. And, you know, this is something that I, I love doing. And I just think it's, it's nice because it's a little personalized message that you can send to someone, someone that you love, someone that, you know, maybe a family member that you want to make sure that they're getting well, or maybe a significant other, or maybe your crush, or whatever the case may be. You can write down this live message, write down something adorable, and send it to them. And I think that's wonderful. And that is something that the FE does now support which I think is fantastic. So pretty much all the software features of the Note 8 have been added to the FE. So you have all of that as well. If I go to the App Edge, I believe I can still do the App Pair. Yes, I can. So you can see the App Pair option, right? I was trying to check for updates on this because I apparently haven't updated the Edge screen, but you can see right here, there's the option to create app pair. So that's another feature that was introduced on the Note 8 that has been backported to the FE. So again, everything that the Note 8 can do software-wise, the FE can do as well. So if you love the Note 8 software-wise, and of course the Note 9, but the biggest thing with the Note 9 is not the software, it's the hardware with the Bluetooth S Pen. But if you love everything that the Note 8 and the Note 9 could do software-wise, the FE can do it as well. So if you liked this old school design, but you missed out on having the newer software features from your Note 7, then this is a fantastic option for you, again, provided it's compatible with your network. So you have the app pair option, which is wonderful. So you can instantly launch two apps. 
So for example, of course this thing's still checking for updates, which is annoying how it decides to check for updates right in the middle of my review. That's pretty rude, isn't it? <laughs> Anyways, so we have that. And of course, just like from the Note 7, we have all of the initial options like translate, magnify, and glance. We've also added Bixby Vision, since this does now have Bixby. We also have the live message and the smart select, which does include the GIF creation that debuted on the Note 7 as well. So that is still here. And we also have the built-in coloring option. Now, I know I have a friend of mine uh, who actually loves this coloring option. There was one day where she was a little bit stressed out, so I let her paint my nails as well as do some coloring on my Note 9 with this app. So she colored a stalk of corn. I wish I could show you guys that, but my Note 9 is filming right now, so I can't. But you do have plenty of built-in coloring options, which coloring is a great stress reliever as well. So it's definitely something that you can really enjoy. And yes, while this screen isn't as bezel-less as a lot of the newer Note 8 and Note 9 and even Note 10 displays, it is still a curved display at 5.7 inches, still a great size screen. This was the last Note with the 5.7 inch display, which of course previously hadn't changed since the Galaxy Note 3 which I'm trying to show you, but the device is falling apart. So with the Galaxy Note 3, we had the exact same size display, but of course, this one has the dual edge display and the quad HD resolution with the best implementation of an edge screen that we had seen in a long time. And I still think this device is the most comfortable and the most beautiful Galaxy device that I've ever held because I love my Note 8 and I love my Note 9, but this one, there's just something about it that just feels really nice. This color is simply the best color on any device that I've ever owned. The blue coral, yes, the Note 9 does look very nice in the blue color and in the purple and the silver and, and all that, and even the copper. And the Note 10 with the aura glow does look kind of nice, but that's a little bit too flashy for my tastes. And the blue on the Note 10 is also wonderful, but this takes the cake, especially with the gold accents. It just looks beautiful. And of course, that's what we got with the Note 7. Now, if you like this exact same color scheme, you can get this identical color scheme on the S7 Edge, but no other device. The S8 does have a blue coral option, but it's not the same blue coral. And of course, Samsung has plenty of other blue devices, like with the Galaxy S6, Galaxy Note 8, Note 9, Note 10. Um, even stuff like the, uh, you know, Galaxy S5 have blue variants, but none of them are the blue coral. And even if they call themselves blue coral, this is the real original blue coral and it is the best. So at least in my opinion, but if you don't like the blue coral, the Note FE does also come in black, silver, and gold. The only one of those that I haven't held is the gold option, but it looks kind of something like this, only it's a little bit of a lighter shade, and of course it's glass. Um, it's basically the exact same gold that you saw on the S7 and S7 Edge. So if you've seen one of those gold variants, then this is that same type of gold. So if you like gold, black, silver, or blue, this device has you covered. Now, some people don't like the gold sides, some people would prefer the silver sides, and if you would, then that is something where you may prefer the color scheme on the something like the Blue Coral S8 or the Blue Topaz Galaxy S6, or potentially even the Blue Note 8 or 9 or 10, where the sides are also blue and color matched. So, anyways, enough ranting about this color because I personally love this color, and also we have the S Pen, which is very similar in color scheme to the Note 9 S Pen. If I can pull out my Note 9 S Pen without it triggering anything, we can see that looking at these two pens, the, uh, the color ratio is exactly contrasted. On the Note 7, we have the, blue, the gold tip with the blue pen and vice versa on the Note 9. No Bluetooth functionality on the Note 7, but one thing that's nice about it is that the yeah, the Galaxy Note 7 and FE pens, of course, are also interchangeable, but the Note 8 pens are also interchangeable. So if you have a Note FE and you lose your pen, you can actually use a Galaxy Note 8 pen on it, and it will fit 100% flush and work just fine. Now, the Note 9 pen you can't use on these because it's a little bit too thick, but the opposite is true. So the Note 7 and 8 pens will work in your Note 9 in a pinch because they are slightly smaller, but the, pretty much the exact same length. 
So if you lose your Note 7 pen and you can't find a Note FE or Note 7 pen, then you can still use a Note 8 pen and they will still fit and be flush 100% perfect. The colors might not match, but you'll still be able to find a replacement with no problem that will fit and function identically. And as far as design and features between the Note 8 and the Note 7 slash FE S Pen, there is no difference. So they're 100% interchangeable, and you can swap them out with each other, and there's zero difference. The, the tips are the exact same length, and they work exactly the same. So that's one thing. If you lose your Note FE S Pen and you're having trouble finding replacements, the Note 8 stuff will work perfectly in a pinch, even if the colors don't necessarily match. So that is one thing, so don't be worried about not being able to find replacement S pens because you can still find places liquidating Note 7 pens, and again, if worse comes to worse and those run out, Note 8 stuff will work on this just fine. I do have my Note 8 pen around here somewhere, but um, whatever, I might, I might grab that later on in the review to show you that, but we'll move on for now. So with that... We also have uh, the earpiece up top as far as the design, which this still sounds wonderful. We have the front-facing camera, iris sensor, proximity sensor, everything else works just fine. As far as the iris sensing capabilities, I can just hold this up to my face, which is easier said than done, especially with glasses. And yeah, this in this case, my irises were not detected. So let me try this again. With glasses, it does work a little bit harder to detect your irises, but as you can see, there we go, we unlocked. And of course, it's the same story because it's the exact same iris sensor as the Note 7. Although, it seemed to be faster on the Note 7. For, I don't know if that's this screen protector or not, but um, this Note 7 seems to be a lot faster with unlocking with my irises. As you can see, it, like if once I get it in frame, and of course, I'm wearing a hat and glasses, but actually now this is starting to do the same thing. So there we go. So we can see, there we go. So the iris sensor unlocked on both these devices. And of course the Galaxy Note, uh, or the Galaxy S8 also has the iris sensor, as does every device going up to the Note 9. But of course the S8 also has the face unlock as an option as well, which none of these devices have. If you want the face unlock, you're gonna have to go to the S8 or Note 8. So there's that. So, but some people will gladly trade having no face unlock for having the front mounted fingerprint sensor, since that is indeed just such a very fast thing. Whereas on devices like the Note 8 and the S8, you have to try to fiddle with it on the back. Thankfully, this is something they they pretty much fixed on the S9 and Note 9. But if you like physical fingerprint sensors and you want them to be on the front, then this is pretty much your last option. And when it comes to notes, this is your pretty much your only option outside of things like the Note 5, which does still have the front fingerprint sensor, and it was the first one that had it to where it wasn't the swipe method that was exist that was exist that did exist on the Note 4. As you can see that one you have to swipe it. This one you just have the button, and a lot of people like that. Now, if you double tap this button, you'll also fire up the Galaxy Note FE's camera, which you have the quick launch option just like the S7 Edge, and you have plenty of options right there. The actual camera quality is still fantastic, and this is still a great camera to use. It's very clear, it works very well, and it's just one of those things where you're gonna be very, very happy with the camera on the Note FE. Sure, the Note 9 and Note 10 have had a lot of great improvements to the camera, but the Note 7 and the Note FE nail the fundamentals, which is it's lightning fast to launch, it pops up immediately, you have plenty of options, and you also still have all the same swipe gestures that you had that debuted on the Note 7, as well as plenty of options for filters and different sort of features that you may like. But yeah, now the front facing camera on this isn't quite as clear as the one that later came out on the Galaxy S8, but it is still a wonderful camera and it is still one that you would be very happy to have. As you can see, both of these still have very, very good quality cameras. And for some reason, an app keeps crashing on my S8, but that's something that's wonderful with the Galaxy Note FE, is that you have plenty of space and you have that SD card slot for whenever you run out of space or just want more space built in. But 64 gigs is a sweet spot pretty much for phones, especially around the price range that you can get the FE for nowadays. So the camera on this is of course wonderful 
and you're not going to be disappointed at all with the camera on this unless you somehow have a defective one. So the camera on this is great and you're going to be very, very pleased with the results from the camera. And like I mentioned, the voice quality is also very good as well. The screen, of course, is beautiful and you have the option to change the resolution if you want to save some battery life as well. But I always recommend just leave it on the max because that's what you paid for. Might as well use it. So if we open up YouTube, we actually can see that this also has HDR, which was something that debuted on the Note 7. And of course, this has an identical display to the Note 7. So you have HDR10 on this. I believe it was HDR10. Either way, it was a ver variation of HDR. It works great with things like YouTube and Amazon and Netflix and all that. So you have HDR and it looks gorgeous on this screen. So that is one thing that you don't have on the S7 or S7 Edge. And if you have it on the S8, then of course you don't have the standard aspect ratio. So if you want HDR and you want a normal aspect ratio, this is the option for you. And of course, this was also one where the curves aren't nearly as distracting as they were on the S7 Edge and the later S8. So you don't have problems with accidental touches. You can still hold this device without accidentally clicking it, and you can scroll just fine without worrying about stuff, especially if you don't have a screen protector, which sounds backwards, but in my experience, that's how it is. So you have that. So if we play a video, we can actually see how well this specifically works. So if I search IntelliTech Studios, we can play one of these videos, one of these wonderful videos. And let's go ahead and play my Galaxy Note 4 review so we can see the audio quality through this single firing speaker. So no dual speakers like we got on the Note 9, but the speaker on this is still pretty okay. One weird issue that I've had with my FE is that the auto-rotate doesn't seem to work. It's very clearly enabled on here, but for some reason my auto-rotate just doesn't want to work. So I have to manually do this. So we'll let this load. It has been often considered the greatest note that was ever made, and for good reason. Nowadays, people will generally cringe at the idea of using a Note 4, especially with how much the software and the hardware has gotten better with newer devices like the Galaxy Note 9 and the Galaxy S10 Plus. After two full contract cycles in the US, is the Note 4 still a device that you should consider getting in 2019? Let's find out. Am I... So as you can see, the audio and video quality on this Galaxy Note FE is wonderful. And of course, since this one has updated software, you can enable the picture in picture mode whenever you exit a YouTube video while it is indeed playing, which is a very nice feature to have. And of course, if we open up any other type of app that plays audio, then we can see that it is wonderful in terms of the audio quality. So this is one thing that's great about the Note FE is that you have the wonderful audio quality. Even if it's not nearly as good as the Note 9, it's still good enough to where it's not completely horrible. I shouldn't say it's wonderful, but it's not bad. It actually is a pretty decent speaker considering it's single firing and also water resistant. So that is one thing that you have, is that you have the speaker down here. So we also have on the bottom, if we look on the bottom, we have the headphone jack, which is a wonderful feature to have. So you do have a headphone jack, unlike the new Note 10s. And it's also in my preferred position. I like it more on the bottom. I don't like I don't like the top as much. I like the bottom a lot more because it's closer to the charging port, so you don't have to worry about if you want to have both things plugged in. It's not taking up both spaces on the device. You just have all your cables coming out of the bottom. I think that's a little bit cleaner. And I also like having the the pop the top just be very nice and clean. With the exception of it'd be nice if it had an extra little dot up here so it had an IR blaster like certain other devices. But unfortunately, Samsung decided not to include that. And I almost thought they included it on the Note 10, but that wasn't an IR blaster. It was just a speaker chamber. So if you want an IR blaster, you're going to have to go back to the Note 4 and the standard Galaxy S6 or S6 Edge. So IR blasters have been dead for a long time in the Galaxy line, and it doesn't look like they're going to be coming back anytime soon. So if you want an IR blaster, your options are unfortunately limited. But... Nevertheless, we
One other thing that we actually didn't mention with the design is I didn't actually end up doing size comparisons, which is something that I will cover right now. So, of course, since this is identical to the Note 7, that means that these are, of course, the exact same dimensions, so don't need to compare that. But if we compare it to some other Galaxy Notes, here it is compared to the Galaxy Note 1, so the very first Galaxy Note. So we can see that the Note 1 is a large amount wider, but the Note FE is a decent amount taller. So that's that. Then compared, I don't have a Note 2 at the moment, so here's the Note 3. So this, uh, these are both, both these devices have a 5.7 inch display. So comparing these, the Note 3 is a decent amount wider, but the FE is just a little bit taller. If I do it like that, you can see FE is just a tiny smidge taller, but the Note 3 is a decent amount wider. That's because the Note 3 has thicker side bezels, whereas the Note 7 not only has thin side bezels, but is also curved, taking up less space and being a lot more narrow, and as a result, more comfortable to hold. Although the Note 3 is fairly comfortable to hold, um, but the Note 7 is the most comfortable Note ever, in my opinion. So there's that. Now with the Note 4, again, same 5.7 inch display, and it's about the same story. It is a little bit wider. However, they are the exact same height. Since the Note 4 is a little bit taller than the Note 3, the 4 and the 7 slash fan edition are the exact same height, just a little bit wider. Same story with the Note 5, which is more narrow than the Note 4, but not as narrow as the Note 7. But again, they're the exact same height. So again, exact same height, but the Note 5 is just the slightest bit wider, as you can tell because that's just the difference between being curved and not curved. And I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> Anyways, so that's the Note 5. And also if we compare it to um, some other devices. So here's the device that immediately followed the Galaxy. Well, this was this one, this Galaxy SA is basically um, sandwiched in between the Galaxy Note 7s because the Note 7 came out right before this and the Note 8 FE came out right after this. So here it is compared to the S8. So the S8 is a little bit shorter and a little bit narrower. Keep in mind this is the standard S8, not the S8 Plus, whereas the S8 Plus would be also be the slightest bit narrower but a little bit taller, but I don't have an S8 Plus on hand. But either way, so that's between the S8 and the FE. And we can also see the difference between the Orchid Gray and the Coral Blue. This is also the true Orchid Gray. The Note 8 does not have the same type of Orchid Gray. So this is the true Orchid Gray, just like this is the true Blue Coral. So there's that. Also, I have a Galaxy S4 Active. If you're, if you like a blue phone, here's a blue S4 Active. So again, no FE is a lot taller and a little bit wider since this is of course an S4, so it's a smaller device. And then of course we have the standard S4, which is the only other S-series phone that I have. Best-selling Samsung smartphone. At least last I checked, maybe the S8 surpassed it, I'm not sure. I believe the S4 is still the highest selling Galaxy, but yeah, so there's the comparison between the S4 and the FE. And to compare some other things, Here's a Game Boy Color. So the Game Boy Color is a lot thicker and a little bit wider, actually a decent amount wider, but the FE is taller than the Game Boy Color. So that's the Note FE versus the Game Boy Color. Now we're gonna compare it to a Linkin Park CD. So actually probably better do it this way. So from this angle, the Lincoln Park CD is a little bit shorter, um, a little bit thicker, and a lot wider. But both of these can hold music on them. 
So both these can hold the same record too, which is nice. But this can hold a lot more than this. But this is prettier. So there's that. And finally, the last comparison we're going to do, actually the second to last. So the second to last is this bottle of Mountain Dew Voltage. So again, the bottle is really not comparable all that much. But nevertheless, that's what they look like next to each other. Kind of hard to measure a round object in a flat one, but there's that. And then finally, a copy of Windows XP. So the copy of Windows XP is a lot taller, a lot thicker, a lot wider. If I line this up to the corner, you can see I turn this like this, you can see it. That's what that looks like. So this one is obviously a lot more advanced. This probably can run Windows XP, but on the same time, the Galaxy Note FE doesn't have Service Pack 2 built in with advanced security technologies. And the Note FE doesn't cost $4.99. This thing's still trying to set up. Either way, I'll show you on the Note 7, since this is clearly taking too long, on the FE. But it works the same way on, really on all these Galaxy phones, it'll work the same way. So, if I go to Samsung Health, here we go, Samsung Health. Ah, uh, and it wants to do the same thing. Okay, yeah, so I agree to all this. Actually, that's optional, I'm not going to do that. So as you can see, come on, so I gotta wait for this. Can't set up app. Oh no. Well, that gave us an error. Skip. Okay, whatever, just go away. Okay, either way, so we'll show you, on, we'll show you on the Note 7 since they're identical. But it's also the same on the S8, and the Note 5, and the Note 4, and the Note 9, and the Note 8, blah blah blah. It's all the same. But, um, either way, whenever we look at this, we can actually show you the heart rate monitor. So we can measure our heart rate, and it's going to ask us just to place a finger on the sensor. So we're going to do that. And it's going to light up our finger like Rudolph. Um, if we go back to the bottom, this is also one of the first Samsung devices with USB Type-C, which is wonderful because this is a much better connector than the micro USB that showed up on earlier Galaxy devices like the Note 5. So we have um, about the same speed as far as actual charging compared to the um, older USB micro B equipped Galaxy devices like the Note 4, S6, and Note 5, but the advantage is it is the reversible connector that is much easier to find, much more durable, and just simply better in every single way. One thing that's also nice is that it is still Quick Charge 2.0. And I say that's nice because, yes, it's not one of the fancier, newer Quick Charge versions, but it still is very fast. You can still charge this thing from 0 to 100 in, you know, less than a couple hours, not even that. Um, and if you're trying to just top it up, it'll take like a half hour, an hour, it depends. It's really not a whole lot, to not, a lot of time. Of course, now newer OnePlus phones have like the warp charging and stuff like that. And yeah, sure, that's all fine and dandy. But the thing is, is that this uh, charging method on the FE is still very good and still plenty fast for what you would need for it. And plus, you know, yes, it doesn't charge any faster, but on the bright side, it doesn't explode so that's good but yeah so we also have um, oh I started playing videos we also have um, on the uh, top there is another microphone as well that I forgot to mention and antenna bands blah 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 uh, one thing that's uh, nice about this sorry my mind just went blank uh, trying to figure out where I left off in the last one. I'll have to edit this part out if I for, if I don't forget to. But one other thing uh, that's really nice about the Note FE is that I really like personally is that the volume rockers are actually separate buttons 
This is one thing that on, I'll have to take the cases off to show you, but this is one thing that was the same on the Note 5 where the volume buttons were separate, whereas on devices like the S8 and the Note 4, this is just all one piece. I actually prefer the way it is on the Note 7. Uh, so I think the Note 7 has the best buttons out of any Galaxy phone. There's also no Bixby button. But since it has the updated ROM, if you actually turn on Bixby Home, you do have Bixby. And, you know, it does work and everything. She still works exactly the same, same way that she did before. There's just no button. So you can still say hi Bixby, but you just can't actually, you know, do anything regarding uh, pressing physical buttons like you can on the S8 which won't do it because it's not turned on and it just slipped out of my hands. So, yeah, um, it does have Bixby, but if you don't like having the Bixby button, then you're going to love the FE because these are just separate volume buttons, so you're not going to worry about hitting the Bixby button accidentally. It's all just volume buttons. And one thing that's nice is that since this is Bixby, it does still run significantly better than S-Voice ever did. So uh, whenever this Note 7 gets booted up, I'll also do a, a quick comparison between Bixby and X-Voice. X-Voice? S-Voice. Um, yeah, if you didn't want to hear S-Voice, you definitely don't want to hear X-Voice. But yeah, so you have... Thank you for interrupting me. You have the Bixby... Assistant, which is built in, and uh, yeah. Also regarding the software features, something I forgot to mention is you do have the screen off memo that debuted with the Note 5, but just like the Note 8 version, it now supports many, many extra pages, so you can keep scribbling to your heart's content. So if you absolutely love the S Pen and writing on this, you're gonna love the FE. And you also have the same option where whenever you pull out the pen, and you write something, so let's say I want to write cheesecake. I can press, first off, I can press the pen button and change the thickness. So that's an option that you have. And I can also pin this to my always on display. So if I pin this to the always on display, then it will show up. And this is another thing that um, was introduced with the Note 7 that still continues with the FE as well. And it's a wonderful feature to have. Also, on the topic of the always-on display, we have plenty of options for uh, customizing the always-on display, which I think is wonderful. So if we go under the display settings, and we go under always-on display, we have a ton of different options for uh, how we can configure the always-on display. So I have it set, you can have it to set to show always, and if you go click on the always-on display, which I seem to have forgotten how to find it. Ah! What? Okay, I'm struggling to find the options for the always on display, even though I just had this open. And I'm not sure why. I think it's under lock screen. Here we go. Nope. Okay. Maybe on this version it's not as customizable, which is weird. Oh, here we go. So go under clock style on always on display. And of course, if you select always on display, you can change the clock style and the colors. So I'm gonna make this blue. And done. And there we go. Now there's your always on display. And as you can see, I have it set up very similar to the way it is on my Galaxy Note 7. Unfortunately, the Note 7 had this really nice little backdrop feature that you had where you had a little backdrop to the actual always on display. In this case, it's a little bit of purple, which matches the Note 7 color scheme. But unfortunately, on the FE and all of the later Notes and S series phones, that is no longer an option. So with the always on display, you just have the actual time and notifications. But that's one thing that's nice is that you do still have the notification options, just like you did with the Note 7, which is a nice upgrade from the S7 and S7 Edge. Although they may have essay interrupting me again although they may have added this with an update to the s7 and s7 edge i think they did but i could be wrong on that it's been a while since i've used an s7 so that's something that they may have added but either way you definitely have it on here and that's one thing that's really nice so i think really the only other thing to talk about with this is just 
Um, again, if you want to use this, I hope you have a GSM carrier because this will only work on AT&T, T-Mobile, Straight Talk, other GSM carriers. So if you're a person who owned a Verizon or Sprint Note 7 and you use it on your network, you may have trouble using this because you're not going to get full functionality and it's, well, to put it in English, it's not going to work. So that's one thing that's really, really sad and unfortunate, but on the bright side, Note 8s are pretty cheap now, so you could, that's always an option. Um, but this is a wonderful phone. I absolutely love it. And um, I don't really think there's much else to talk about. I covered accessories. I covered the quality of phone calls, the speaker, the display, the charging, the headphone jack, uh, the S Pen and its features, all the always on display features, the camera features, uh, the software support, the overall experience, stuff that doesn't work on it, stuff that does work on it. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, there's, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. There's probably going to be something that I forgot to mention in this video. Uh, because of course, if you just talk about stuff incredibly, then there might be some time a week from now where I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to talk about this feature. But if that does happen and you guys have any questions about said feature that I may have possibly missed or you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Anyway, guys, this is Intellitech Studios signing out, and this is my full review in 2019 of the Forgotten Warrior, the Samsung Galaxy Note Fan Edition. So anyway, guys, this was Intellitech Studios. I will see you guys in the next review which may or may not be the Galaxy Note 7. It might be something else. I don't know. It just depends on what I'm feeling that day or what you guys request. Anyway, guys, any questions about the Note FE, drop them in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video. This is Intellitech Studios signing out with one of the most comprehensive Note FE reviews that you will find on this platform in 2019. I will see you guys in the next video, and if you bought this device, let me know how you like it and enjoy your Note FE. Again, Intellitech Studios, for the third time, signing out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.